so I am uh, speaking with the illustrious Daryl Seeger, who has uh, just developed The Little Things. Why don't you introduce who you are, what you do, and uh, why you came up with this product. And I want to have a conversation about uh, the languages of love and actually how I see that in the in the hands. I'll be posting some mm, videos about okay. that uh, later, but I just wanted to give you the, the structure of the wisdom behind this and then what you can then do with this pack and then follow up for the, the these little two minute videos I'll be sh sharing about where I see these languages of love in the hand. So why don't you introduce yourself and what is it that your your mission is? Sure. Thanks, Brent. Uh, hi, my name's Daryl. I'm a leadership and, and relationship coach, and I'm really all about having people bring more love and laughter into leadership and into their lives. So on one hand, uh, I work with organizations and teams and leaders. And on the other hand, I've then decided to develop this uh, as a product and, a, and an app to really help people have conversations around things that matter. Because oftentimes people struggle to have conversations or don't even have conversations at all. I mean, bear in mind, I, I didn't come up with the love languages, obviously. This was Gary Chapman in the in the 1980s. But I wanted to have a new, uh, more interactive way of using them. Because generally we give love that we like to receive, not necessarily the love that the other person likes to receive. And also, especially as, as men, I think we can be guilty of thinking that, oh, it's all these, you know, the big sweeping gestures of love that really matter. Whereas I believe it's the little things that we do consistently wow. over time that yeah. make the big difference. Hence, it's and, called the little things. <laughs> that's why it's called the little things. And really, this came up because uh, I've done, I mean, I've had a number of relationships over the years, and I've always done these little things for them. I've always wanted to find out what matters to them and how I can make them smile. And so I compiled a, a list of all these different things that I'd done for various girlfriends over the years. And I think I showed somebody at some point in time or I showed a female friend, she said, oh my God, I wish I wish my boyfriend had done that for me. And so it just started out as an idea of like, oh, maybe, maybe this list would help other men uh, be a little bit more considerate, thoughtful, kind to, to their other halves. And it then just grew from there. It's like, okay, well, why does it have to just be for men towards women? Why can't it be for anybody to anybody else? Um, and that's, that's kind of the stage I'm at now. And that, as you have in your hands, is these, the second iteration of it. And let's see where it goes from there. What, what, what's inter uh, some interesting serendipity is that I, uh, my wife and I uh, have meet on a weekly basis. And we decided, you know, it'd be really good to just try out a mediator, right? To see what happens when, and it was really good. It's not like, we, you know, we, we love each other. Everything's awesome there. But having a mediator allowed us to talk about some issues in a more formal way that allowed, uh, I guess, the attention of a third party to know, hey, this is really important. We need to solve this now in this one hour, whatever. And it wasn't long in maybe the second session that he, he started to realize that we had different languages of love and that she being, she has circles all over her fingerprints, world patterns, and that creates a, a pattern of service. And that mm -hmm. the language that she was speaking was hey, I'm doing all these things. And in fact, I can measure where we are in the relationship scale based mm -hmm. on the service breakdowns, right? So there was like, okay, where's well, no coffee today, right? So we know mm -hmm. that we're in that. So, oh, no coffee or lemon juice, right? That's a real, that's <laughs> that DEFCON 3, right? And whereas I have a different love, love language and having that powerfully realized mm -hmm. that, as long as I'm speaking my language, it's hoping that she's going to get it while she's speaking her language of giving and sharing, it was never going to ever mm. resolve. And so when I had to language it in a different way. So uh, this created a big breakthrough. Uh, she's just like, wow, you're so present now that you're, you're such a different person after these sessions. And I'm like, I'm the same guy. I'm just speaking your language. So why don't you say a little bit about the history of Chapman's work and why it's so important to 
understand somebody's language and how they can even uh, understand, maybe introduce what are these languages. Well, I think you summed it up beautifully in the sense that this is where a lot of, well, maybe a lot of, but several misunderstandings can come from because we can think that we are displaying love. And as you said, you know, your wife is, she's giving, she's giving, she's giving, she's doing these acts of service. She's making you cups of tea. She's making sure that your water's there doing all these things. But to you, because that's not how you receive it, you're just like, well, okay, this is, this is fine. No big deal. You know, if it was, what was uh, your dominant language then in, in that case? Uh mine is uh talking <laughs> okay so words all right so yeah um so and then you know you might be complimenting your wife saying oh she looks lovely and thank you for the food and all these sort of things but she's not receiving it because she wants you to do things for her and so you're right. both displaying love but these misunderstandings or these doubts or these arguments can can arise because actually we're not communicating in the way that the other person either is aware of or has access to in terms of receiving and so it's just to put us on the same page really simply or just to give us another level of empathy and understanding that okay we're all a little bit different but how can we get together and move closer as to as opposed to moving further apart what are the love languages uh five uh, according to uh, mr chapman are words of affirmation acts of service quality time gifts and physical touch mm -hmm. yeah i say gifts gifts and physical touch and words of affirmation yeah. are very nice i think uh in, in fact oh. the that the, the the media made made an excellent recommendation he said as a ritual start every morning with a hug and it's something that you acknowledge about it and is is superficial or artificial that this may sound leave every day with three things that you're grateful for to the human being that you're sharing a house with and you, we were completely like some days it was ha really hard because we were kind of upset about the way we handled the children or whatever and mm. uh and yet we're still going mm, yeah um, <laughs> i really appreciate the lemon water that you cooked a really nice dinner or whatever yeah. and that that's that's really helped so yeah where do these is this just arbitrary where does chapman come up with these love languages is it neurologically based i can't remember to be honest i did read up on it a, a while back but uh you know it, it's it's a theory you know how how rooted in uh stringent neuroscientific uh research i'm, I'm not entirely certain obviously you've said it, it it relates or you can see how it relates to the hand and then that would then tie as you've said previously to the neurological development of the brain uh it's just it's another way to interpret how we communicate with each other and i think it's just another level of awareness and it's another level on which we can create a deeper connection with the people that we have in our lives so what happens then when somebody when you realize that somebody has a different love language I mean, we, we all have all of them to varying degrees. It just happens that, you know, somebody might have a, a different preference to us mm -hmm. and that's okay, but it's, what do we want to do with that information? So as the phrase goes, nothing is inherently good or bad, but thinking it makes it so. And so what's our interpretation of somebody having a, a different, let's say, preference in terms of how they like to receive love? Do I recognize that and then want to step towards that and think, oh, okay, this is interesting. I, I receive love differently. She receives love differently. Okay, let me, what can I do in order to make that person feel more loved? Or you can turn around and say, nah, it's too complicated. It's too difficult. I like to do or have things the way I want to have it. In which case that's going to lead to a different outcome as well. But having more information with regards to that allows us to then make the decisions that are in alignment with what we want most. Is there a way for people to realize their love language in an easier way other than just yeah. guess and intuitive? Well, you've got the you've got the the quiz. Uh, I think the five love languages quiz. So I have to be very careful for, for copyright reasons, not say five love languages. That's why I just say love languages. Uh, I will probably uh, do a slightly better one uh, on the website that I, I have or I'm building currently. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think there are some things that it lacks and there's some other components that I'm going to tie in when the app gets built so there'll be a feedback loop through so you can track the, the quality of your relationship I have a 
an agreement from a study uh, a university they they allowed me to use some of their studies so they have 10 metrics that you can map against the quality of your relationship and i'd like to use that early on because generally people only only look at their relationship when things are a little bit messed up so i'd like to be able to have a look at those feedback loops much earlier in the relationship process so actually it can mitigate you getting to that point in time and then with uh, the reminders of doing things that are based on your love languages uh, your partner's love languages preferences this can all just help to have a better quality relationship bring more love fun laughter levity into into the relationship what is your love language may i ask you may my my primary ones are quality time and physical touch so mm. do like a hug and i do like well i also like doing things for other people but i i always find it nice when people have taken the time to do something for me nice and uh in your uh relationship uh when you're with somebody let's say who has a a language of of giving and service uh uh do you find that by uh by giving more to that person who has a giving language that you also get more time uh and touch in return does it work uh it does it work in that way I think hypothetically, yeah. I mean, you know, my my previous relationship with with Zena was a, uh, a challenging one, and I think in t- you know she was still figuring a lot of stuff out for for herself. So I didn't get to see that through to fruition. Um, and although I've done things in the past, I haven't been as conscientious as I have been since you know during before after the work that we did together. Uh, so let's see what uh, the next relationship brings. All right. So what what the way this is structured is yeah. you open up the box and you have uh, these uh, two sections here. Uh, it's a, one section comes with these cards right here. And the other section is color coded, as you can predict. These are the la- love language cards, right? So why don't you take us through this so that people understand what is the, the the architecture? Like I'm gonna take one of the black cards and it's going to say, when do I feel most cared for and cherished in our relationship? So I've got my card. You right. have your card. Uh, yeah, so the idea is that you, you have some question cards, which are some are generic. They're just relationship question cards that you can have conversations around. And the other is a bit more specific to the card. So, you know, how can we integrate this particular activity into our relationship? So the idea, I mean, but bear in mind, this is why it's it's interesting to get feedback as well. So I've had the idea of how I think people will use this, uh, but it's then I'm really open to hearing, okay, whether it works or how we can simplify things. But generally, the idea is you take a card, you then take a question card and have a conversation with your partner around that particular activity and answer the question that is on the question card. Mm-hmm. So... And these are the languages of love, yes? They are all the five categories. And I think each one has 22 suggestions. And there should be a couple of blank cards in there where you can write your own particular activity that falls into that category. Obviously, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just ideas that I think most people would probably be able to do. uh, And perhaps there are some that people haven't thought of. So some suggestions. So what uh, what's what does green stand for? Oh God, you're going to ask me about the colors now. I can't remember what the color. It should be written on the back. Uh, the 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 category of uh, of the card. I can't remember. Okay, what quality what time. The little things. There you there go. go. Green the green is quality time. Yeah. Great, and, and it says share purple. happy memories together is a quality time. So if I really want to upgrade myself as a most considerate person, who happens to know that my my wife's language of love is quality time then i can whip this out and go all right we're going to cook together we're going to dance together we're going to get to know our friends more we're going to go to a photo shoot now another uh another one for example is the the language of words of affirmation so you have things like fill a jar with notes about things that you like about them. Ooh, give them an endearing nickname. Let's go to the uh, 
physical touch. That's a good one, which is warm <laughs> these... up their side of the bed before they get in. That's very considerate. Don't so with these, this, ever with these as well, I think from, from your perspective and your wife's perspective, it would be for her to look through the, uh, the, the acts of service one. And, you know, she can say this to you, show, show it to you and say, hey, darling, can you do this for me this week? Uh, so it's about picking ones that also Im are important to you so that the other person then understands, okay, that's important. And there's a conversation then around why it's important and then how you can integrate that into your relationship or how frequently you want to integrate it. Love it. So receiving gifts, make them a little de-stress care package, take them up for a candlelight dinner, take them on a trip, take them out for lunch during their workday. All good stuff. You've just made me, my kids, by the way, uh, are using this to learn English. <laughs> so, oh, no, that's, that's super cool. That's I'm super sure cool. that was not your uh, intention. Um, absolutely, but there's there's something behind it. Just be, care of the, uh, be careful of the make love one. That's probably just one that requires a bit more explanation. Uh, hey, it's that. in the cards. We got to do it. <laughs> uh, no, not with the kids, but wait. Okay, great. Well, uh, I sure appreciate this short introduction absolutely how do they buy the little things where did they go to get this what's your it's website a, a good question you can either go to the the website it's just the little things.me um hop on to the instagram account that's there or just ping me an email which is just daryl at the little things.me and Excellent. Uh, i'm still in the very functional stage of setting things up so it'd be a individualized uh packaging and, and, and sending out at the moment. Well, it's a beautiful gift. Thank you so much for sharing this and bringing this out to the world, Daryl. And thank you. Uh, really enjoy being with you. Always a pleasure to be with you.